Hi, I'm Dana Schof, editor of Civil War Times Magazine, and I'm here at Antietam National Battlefield with Melissa Wynn, director of photography. She's behind the camera, and of course, it's raining. All week was really nice and sunny, but the day we come out here, it's drizzling on us, but at least it's not too windy. Now, of course, Antietam was fought on September 17, 1862, between General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia and Major General George McClellan's Army of the Potomac. And it's still the bloodiest day in American history. When those two armies fought in a single day, they generated 23,000 casualties, which is just amazing to think of that many men are killed, wounded, or missing in one day. You may not see any recognizable landmark behind me. You may not realize where I am on the battlefield, but I'm just a few yards east of one of the battlefield's notorious landmarks. And Melissa's going to pan slowly to the right and you're going to see the 1896 War Department Tower in the Sunken Road. And of course the Sunken Road is, just as it's called, was a road that had worn down through erosion that was used by Confederate troops as a natural trench to defend the Confederate center. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a minute. But right now Melissa's going to continue to pan because even though it's gray and hazy, it's still fairly clear and the view from this area is amazing. As she works her way around to the north, you can see on the horizon, hopefully, the New York Monument, and just to its left is the Visitor Center. And as she continues to pan around, you'll see the light-colored buildings of the Muma Farm, the house and the barn. Now, the Muma house was burnt during the battle, and it's going to be in full blaze when the Union troops advance past it to attack this position. It's rebuilt in 1863. On the horizon to the right and above the Muma uh, barn, you'll see the East Woods, another famous battlefield landmark here. And when the Union troops attack this position, and that is the divisions, the Second Corps divisions of Brigadier General William French and Major General Israel Richardson, they're going to advance to the right or to the east of the East Woods. Dead center, you'll see the Roulette Farm, another prominent battlefield landmark. And we're going to go down there later and take a walk around the Roulette Farm because it's a really beautiful place. Continuing to pan to the east, off in the distance, hopefully you can see the hazy outline of South Mountain. And on South Mountain, on September 14th, 1862, Lee's rear guard fought the advance units of McClellan's Army of the Potomac at three mountain gaps, Turner's, Fox's, and Crampton's gaps before the fighting here. Also take note of the rolling terrain and the openness of the terrain. And this terrain will feature in a, our little later discussion, we talk about the Irish Brigade's advance and how open and exposed they were as they approached the sunken road. Continuing to spin around to the south, generally speaking, the south, south Mountain will disappear and you will see Elk Ridge in the foreground, another topographical landmark. So, now, Melissa is turning and she's facing the sunken road. And what I find fascinating about the topography here, as I said, you have all these swales and ridges on this battlefield. And if you move a few feet to the left or to the right or to the front or to the back, your view can change dramatically. And of course, the soldiers' views change dramatically as well. And even though we're really close to the sunken road, you really can't see it very well. So what happens in this area is about nine o'clock in the morning, the fighting has died down in the cornfield and the Westwoods area of the battlefield, and the Federals begin to push on the Confederate center and attack this sunken road. About 2,700 Confederates are in the road when the attack begins. French's division is the first to advance, and they attack the center and the northern portion of the sunken road. And they are very quickly stopped by the devastating Confederate gunfire coming out of this natural trench. Colonel John Gordon of the 6th Alabama of Rhodes Brigade that's in the northern sector of the, uh, uh, the road will actually write, the entire front line, with few exceptions, went down in the first consuming blast. So the opening volleys uh, delivered by the Confederate troops in the sunken road stopped French's division in their, in their tracks. And even though fighting continues, French's men sort of grind to a standstill and can't take the sunken road. That's when Richard's division is sent in to the left of French. They're going to attack this portion of the road, and the lead element of the division is Brigadier General Thomas Marr's famous Irish Brigade. And from right to left, that'll be the 69th New York, 29th Massachusetts, 63rd, and 88th New York. They're going to advance across that open ground behind you. They have to stop, 
take down fences and they're very exposed. And the Confederates, the North Carolinians that are in that portion of the road, actually come out to the lip that you see here. They come out of the road and use this lip for their own protection to deliver devastating volleys at the Irish Brigade. The Irish Brigade will lose 540 casualties here, including Marr himself. His horse will go down and he'll get pinned underneath it, be taken off the field in, in a dazed condition. Some people claim he was drinking, but his horse did go down and he had to be removed from the field. But Marr talks about the devastating gunfire from this position cutting lanes through his men as they advance across these open fields. Melissa and I are now going to advance toward the sunken road and you'll see how it starts to come into view here. As we walk toward the road, uh, you might see off to your left here, of course, the War Department Observation Tower. You'll also see a smaller monument to the right to the Irish Brigade that was put up by sculptor Ron Tunison and a mortuary cannon, as they're called, because Israel Richardson, the commander of that other federal division, is going to be mortally wounded here later in the day after this road is captured. And now <clears throat> we've just gone a few feet, excuse me, but you can see the entire sunken road before you. So you can imagine the challenge the attacking Federals face when they, this entire road is full of Confederates blasting away. And now the men of the Irish Brigade use this same lip as protection for themselves because they'll advance to this point. Marr says they get about 30 paces from the sunken road, which is roughly where we are. They'll advance to this point, open fire, and then drop back and continue to fire to use this lip for their protection. If you walk across this field, there are, there are sort of lips and swales like this across the entire field that many of these Union soldiers use to protect themselves from this devastating gunfire. Let's take a walk into the road itself. And as we advance toward it, you can um, see these um, monuments here come into closer view. The fencing along the road was here during the engagement, but it was torn down by the Confederates and used to help reinforce the position. And also, there are Confederate troops on the other side of the road that are continually firing at the, the Union soldiers attacking this position. So it's, it's a devastating hail of gunfire that the Federals have to face. And even though these two divisions vastly outnumber the Confederates in this road, the protection it offers helps them hold this position. Now we're turning and we're going to walk down a little bit to get into the deeper part of the road. <clears throat> you get a nice view of the visitor center uh, up on the ridge, so the perspective from here is, is really interesting and worthwhile. Okay, so we're down into the sunken road, and of course many of you have been here and you can see what a natural trench it provided for these Confederate troops. I'd like Melissa, if she can, the grass is a little slick because of the rain, but to go up to the top here, because basically we've come back around on the other side of that slight rise of ground, and you can see how the ground drops down behind it, and the Union troops would have used it for their own protection. So, one of the things that I want to emphasize about this battlefield if you don't get off the park roads and walk in the fields, you can't really understand it because the terrain is so shifty and changes so rapidly. One of the things I did want to show you is, if you don't have this book, this is my well-loved copy of Frazzanito's Antietam, the Photographic Legacy of America's Bloodiest Day. And of course, there were photographs taken a few days after the engagement that show the road now, looking down it as you are as well, full of Confederate dead because eventually, the Union troops are going to be able to break through and drive the Confederates out of here. The Confederate troops will fall back to the Piper Farm to the west and form a new battle line. And even though those Second Corps Union troops have been able to break through here, they are so exhausted and have lost so many officers and suffered so many casualties that they can't really push forward and a stalemate will ensue here on this part of the field. And of course, later in the day, the final part of the Battle of Antietam will take place when Union troops capture Burnside's Bridge and try to drive into Sharpsburg. And that'll be, of course, later in the afternoon. But this is the about 9 o'clock in the morning the fighting begins here, and it ends around 1 in the afternoon. But as I was saying, you need to get off the park roads and explore these fields to really understand the battle. 
the location where I was, where we just were, once crops are in the field, you can't really go out there, but about halfway down to the monument, which is the 132nd Pennsylvania Monument, the, the color bear, there's always a bloody lane trail that you can take all the way out into the field down to the roulette farm. And you can also start at the roulette farm and come back this way, and that will give you a perspective the Union soldiers had as they attacked the sunken road, and I highly recommend you doing that. So like I said, we're going to sign off now, and we'll be back a little bit later down at the roulette farm. So thanks for tuning in, and this is Dana Schof and Melissa Lynn of Civil War Times Magazine temporarily signing off from the sunken road on the Antietam National Battlefield.